Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. I'm going to be doing some freezer meals with you guys. So most of these meals, like minus the chili, I have actually made in a video where I went really in depth, made it really clear how to make each meal, and I'll leave that video linked right up here for you. But today I'm going to kind of show you like a more practical way to do freezer meals. Um, I think we're going to end up prepping today and then kind of putting everything up together and finishing it all up tomorrow, kind of cutting vegetables today and kind of breaking it up like that. I know a lot of you guys don't have like eight hours to commit to cooking freezer meals in one day. So we're going to split it up. My mom is helping me. She's here. I'm um, very pregnant. I don't know if you guys can see. Um, so if you see her kind of floating around in the background, that's my mom. Um, she's going to be helping. But yeah, so let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you kind of um, the prep that we're going to do today to make tomorrow a little bit easier. So my mom is working on chopping up one, two, three, four, five onions, yellow onions. Um, right now we're just using a Pampered Chef manual food processor to do that to make it a little bit easier. Um, if you have like a food processor, that's what I would recommend doing if you're doing this many onions, especially if onions bother you. Because um, <laughs> sometimes they do that. Uh, but I wanted to let you guys know we're making a crock pot chicken teriyaki, uh, chicken, cheese, broccoli, and rice casserole, lasagna, chili, taco casserole. That's it. And we're making like, we're like quadrupling these recipes, making a really big, a whole bunch of freezer meals. So, um, yeah, so right now we're just prepping by getting all the onions chopped up because that's a lot of work. <laughs> Are you okay? Mm -hmm. I'm just a little teary eyed. <laughs> so, once she's done chopping the yellow onions, she's really gonna rough chop two red onions and like by rough chop I mean like big pieces so and we'll show you that and then um she's actually doing six yellow onions because I forgot about an onion for the chili and then she's going to take a bell pepper and just cut that up into little square pieces. I want to show you I'm starting um the first batch of meat for lasagna so in here I have about two cups of beef, a medium onion, um, a pound of Italian sausage, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a teaspoon of salt. So I'm just um, browning this up, and then once it's done, I'll um, basically repeat it with the second half um, to get it browned up and kind of get a lot of it cooking. When you're freezer cooking, um, there's a lot of time, like a lot of things that need to be cooked on the stove. So if you can do some of the stuff that needs to sit on the stove the night before, it really will help a lot. So that's what I'm working on. And my mom is just about finished up with all the chopping and then we don't have to do, worry about any chopping tomorrow. Sorry my face isn't in the frame, but I just want to show you guys the way I'm doing this. Um, so you want, this like makes a ton of fat. Um, and I use 90-10 beef. I think the, it's the Italian sausage that makes it so fatty. So what I do is just take a slotted spoon and kind of gather um, it up that way um, to drain the fat and then I'll let it cool a little bit and uh, I'll probably pour it into like a bowl and let it cool a little bit before I dump it in the trash. So i kind of give you guys um, the way I'm straining it, that's what I'm doing. I just want to show you really quickly what my mom did over here. So this is um, onion that she chopped up. This is not for one recipe, this is for um, all the recipes, it's a really big bowl. This is the onion for the chicken teriyaki, so you can see that um, big rough chops, you want it like that. So the bell pepper for the chili, so that's about the size of that. And then for the chicken, broccoli, brown rice casserole, we need about eight cups of chicken um, cooked. Um, so this is what we, she chopped up for that, and this is a really big bowl. Um, and we can always make more if we need to, but this was one package. How many of us would you say? Eight. Around eight. So around eight breasts um, just chopped up. And so yeah, that's what sh she did over there. This is the um, meat that we're going to use for the lasagna. I think we're going to go ahead and maybe mix the tomato sauces and all the marinara and all that good stuff. Um, go ahead and mix that in. Come over here, try not to make you guys too dizzy. Um, I went ahead and started 
Cook in the chicken up for the um, chicken, broccoli, brown rice casseroles. And my mom is cooking the meat for the taco casseroles. So in there she's just got four pounds of beef, like four onions, um, some black pepper. Um, what else we put in there? Garlic. Garlic. Minced garlic. Um, so that's what she's got going in there. Um, if you, like I said, if you want the exact recipes, I have like a really thorough video on all these recipes um, and a past video that you can definitely check out in the description box, really thorough and um, really good just explanation on how to cook everything. But that's kind of what we got going on right now. Once I started cooking the chicken, I decided that um, poor, per portion, I don't think it was enough chicken. So we're doing a second package of chicken, so it'll actually probably be around 16 breasts um, all together. So and I'm making four casseroles, but each casserole is two meals. So it's like, you do the math. <laughs> Leave it down in the comments. So now we're going to mix the sauces in with this meat for the lasagna. So I've got four jars of um, just like marinara sauces. Um, so it calls for uh, four cans of tomato sauce. Well, I had one can and needed to buy three, and on my shopping list I wrote one can, which is what I had. So that's pregnancy brain. So now I've got two cans of tomato sauce, and I need three or four cans. So I've got tomato paste in my pantry, so I'm just going to take some of that and mix it with water. I've got a bunch of cans. I just pulled two out, and I'll mix it with water until I get to the consistency of a tomato sauce. Um, and um, to, so that I've got about four cups or four cans. Okay, so a real life moment of cooking with my mom. I didn't know this trick. If you have a jar and it won't open because of the pressure and you're trying to do it, show them what you did. She just like hit it with a knife so it released the pressure that was in it. It's that tiny little hole. And it has a little hole in the top and then it'll open really easy. So. <laughs> So as you guys saw, she mixed all that up and we went ahead and add the, added the Italian seasoning and then now she's about to mix up the ricotta. So that's just um, two big tubs of ricotta and then we're going to add some uh, grated parmesan, just the nothing fancy, craft, dried stuff. And then she's also going to add some parsley. So when you're putting it in the pans, you just want to spray it with some kind of non-stick spray. I just used some spray olive oil, put some sauce down, and then the oven ready lasagna noodles, and then put a little bit more sauce, and then put the ricotta mixture, and some mozzarella, shredded mozzarella cheese, and then basically just repeat that finishing with the sauce and then the mozzarella cheese. Okay, so we'll see you guys tomorrow. That's what we got done tonight. So we at least got four of these big giant lasagnas done. The chicken is cooked. There's my mom's dog um, <laughs> over here. This is all of the meat for the taco casseroles. And then, so tomorrow we're going to make the chili and then put the rest of the meals together and we'll see you then. Hey guys, so it's day two of freezer cooking. So I wanted to tell you guys really quick what we're going to do. So yesterday we finished the lasagna. Today we're going to start and finish the chili. We're going to take the chicken, broccoli, brown rice casserole that I have the cooked chicken here for. We still have to cook the rice because it didn't make sense to make the rice before because it was going to make such a big amount to try to find room in the fridge for it. Um, steam the broccoli, mix all that together. Taco casserole, we've got the meat already made. We're going to mix that up with basically just canned goods and then layer it into the pans. And then the chicken teriyaki, um, we have the onions already chopped and basically that's just dumping it into a plastic bag. So 
let's go ahead and get started today and finish this all up. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this really giant bowl. This is from Sam's Club. I use it a lot for freezer cooking and things like that. And then put the meat in there. And then I want to tell you guys really quick, the recipe is actually kidney beans and it tastes really good like that. But I have a whole bunch of black beans. So I'm gonna put black beans instead. So you wanna drain the black beans. So four cans of that, four cans of uh, Rotel um, or just diced tomatoes with green chilies undrained and then four cans of cream of mushroom and four cans of cream and chicken uh, because I did the recipe times four so I've got four pounds of meat so let's go ahead and mix that up. You want to start by laying down the tortillas, flour tortillas. I just take it with a pizza cutter and a cutting board and just kind of cut them into little pie shapes and we'll start by layering that and then layer the meat mixture and then cheese and then just repeat that and then you're just going to finish with just the meat mixture and then the cheese on top of that. Okay, so we're gonna cook one tonight, so I'm not gonna go through the trouble of covering it and everything, but here's the baking instructions. Taco casserole covered at 350 for one hour, uncovered for 30 more minutes. So we're just gonna cover those up and stick them in the freezer. So I'm sorry, the chili, I just used the America's Test Kitchen recipe from my cookbook. Um, so in the pot right now, I've already got heated up a couple tablespoons of, um, it calls for vegetable oil. I just put some olive oil in there because it's easy because I've got it right here in my little thing in the kitchen. So then to that, we're gonna add two medium onions, which we already um, chopped up some onions yesterday, so which is about two cups. And then a bell pepper, which we also chopped up yesterday. And then for the seasonings, I always just pre um, measure them out and put them in a little bowl like this. So in here I've got a quarter cup of chili powder, a tablespoon of ground cumin, two teaspoons of ground coriander, a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, a teaspoon of dried oregano. The recipe calls for half a teaspoon of cayenne, but I'm not putting that in there. I'm leaving that out. And then about six medium garlic cloves minced, or, or about two tablespoons. So I buy it um, in a little package thing like this, so I'm just going to estimate about two big dollops to make two tablespoons like that so and then we're just gonna let that cook for let's see about 10 minutes until the vegetables are beginning to brown and are softened this is about what the vegetables should look like I use this wooden spoon to scrape the bottom because you don't want it to get stuck on and sticky on the bottom so now what I'm going to do is um, it takes two pounds of 85-15 um, beef so I'm gonna add one pound at a time until it just starts to brown uh, but not like cook but just so it's no longer pink and then I'll add the second half of the meat alright so the beef is done cooking so now to that, we're going to add a 28 ounce can of tomato puree and a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes undrained. And then we're gonna add two cans of dark red kidney beans. But I need to open those and um, drain them and rinse them still, but then we're gonna add two cans of that. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I mean, you can try to dump it in. I just don't think it'll work very well. So, um, and then we're going to cook it. Oh, and then we're also going to add half a teaspoon of salt. We're going to bring it to a boil, reduce the heat to a simmer, cover it, stirring occasionally for an hour, and then we're going to remove the lid and simmer for another hour, stirring occasionally. So, you want to be really careful because this will stick to the bottom of your pan, which is an issue I've had before. As long as you're stirring it regularly and scraping the bottom, it is fine. Um, once it gets too burnt on, you obviously don't want to scrape the bottom anymore because um, then it'll be all burnt and, and you're mixed into it. But if it just is starting to stick, you can add half a cup of water and it'll sometimes that'll loosen up the bottom. So 
we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so right now we're working on the um, chicken, broccoli, brown rice, cheese casseroles. So this is what they'll look like finished. We went ahead and put um, the first half together. But basically all you do is take two cans of cream of mushroom, two cans of cream of chicken, a salt and pepper to taste, four cups of cheese, and then we just split the chicken in half, and then two bags of frozen broccoli, which you could probably do three. It would probably be a little better to do three bags of frozen broccoli. And then um, we cook some white rice. Get down, take your top. And um, we just kind of add the rice until it looks like the right amount of rice for uh, in proportion to everything else. Then you just put it down in the casserole. We'll spray the casserole, put it in the casserole dish, and then top it with some more cheese. And that's all there is to it. So these are the um, chicken, broccoli, rice casseroles all finished. So I just wrote broccoli casserole on there because I'll know exactly what that means. So these you just want to thaw and bake for at 350 for 30 minutes. If you don't thaw them, then they'll need to bake a lot longer than that because they're like solid bricks when they're frozen. Um, so definitely you want to pull this out like the morning before. Like not just the day before, but like the morning before. You want to bake it to make sure that it has lots of time to thaw. And um, if you don't pull it out ahead of time, make sure you leave a lot more time than 30 minutes. So we're gonna stick these in the freezer. Okay, so these are the chicken, teriyaki chicken. It's a crock pot meal, so it's like a dump and go meal. This is my favorite to make because it's so easy. So, um, and each of these bags I wrote on it before I put anything in it, because that's way easier while they're flat. And then each of the bags is two raw chicken breasts, just whole, not cut. Um, we didn't even trim all the fat off of them. We just made sure there wasn't any bones or any big, um, tough pieces or anything like that because it's gonna go in the crock pot and it's all gonna cook and be really good so that's what I've got and I've got four bags here with two breasts in each bag so I've got um, this bag of baby carrots that I bought and then I have a bag that has a little bit left in my fridge so I'm just gonna take these and split it between all four bags So now that that's done, I've got four cans of pineapple chunks. Don't drain them because you're going to put the, um, I guess, syrup, the liquid that's in there in each of the bags. So one can per bag, and these are 20 ounce cans. So because they make crushed pineapple and whole pineapple and pineapple chunks and, chunks and pineapple rings, um, you just want to make sure that you're getting pineapple chunks because if you buy something else, um, I mean, you could always make it work in some way or another, but um, it's just easier if you just go ahead and buy the chunks. Then, yesterday when we were doing all the prep work, we chopped up two red onions, just really big chunks. So, I'm going to split that between the four bags. So, it calls for two garlic cloves chopped, and about a teaspoon is a garlic clove. So, about two teaspoons. And the, the last thing is teriyaki sauce. The kind of teriyaki sauce I normally buy wasn't in the Walmart. So, um, I'm not sure they still sell it or not. I bought the Great Value once, and it was really bad. It was way too salty. So don't buy the great value. So we're going to give this one a try and hopefully it's not too salty. Um, so I'm just going to pour half into each bag. That is it. And those are um, about 12 ounce bottles of teriyaki sauce that I had there. So then um, what I wrote on here I wanted to say was just I wrote teriyaki chicken. Add half a cup of teriyaki sauce because really the recipe says add half a cup in each bag, but really um, that's only six ounces. And uh, so, and anyway, it just equals out about to where um, I'm gonna add half a cup instead of a quarter of a cup whenever it cooks. So that probably didn't make any sense. Anyway, I added six ounces of teriyaki sauce to the bag, and I'm gonna add another half cup when I cook it. So add half a cup of teriyaki sauce, 
and then it says cook on high for four hours and you can also do low for eight hours um, either one of those would work and I'm using freezer bags which is kind of important that you want to use a freezer bag and not just a Ziploc storage bag because there really is a difference in the quality of the bags and um, this will just last a lot better with it being um, in a freezer bag. So then I just do it like this and this is how I freeze them on top of each other like this and get all the air out of them as much as you can like that. And then I can, you can stack them like this in the freezer and let them freeze like this. Um, if you have, if you're stacking them like right on top of your wire rack in the freezer, um, like if you've got like the wire kind of um, in your freezer, you do want to be careful because it's a Ziploc bag and as you can imagine it would kind of sink into those where those cracks are. So you might want to put a piece of cardboard or something underneath them when you're doing that if that makes sense. But yeah, so um, this one's definitely by far the easiest freezer meal. And whenever I serve it, I just make some rice to go with it um, in a rice cooker, which is super simple, and serve it over rice, and it's really good like that. Or instant rice. You can also do instant rice. So yeah, that is the chicken teriyaki. Okay, so for the chili, um, it's ready. I just submitted it the way I told you guys I did. Uh, I didn't time it. It was kind of probably around two hours. Um, I simmered it. So I'm hoping to get three meals out of it. Just It's just me and my husband. Um, so I'm just going to start by splitting it between three bags. And we'll kind of see how much I end up with in each bag. And then with this, I'll make, um, if I could think of the word, cornbread. A batch of cornbread with each one. I also want to mention that this did not just get finished and I'm putting it in bags. That wouldn't work very well. Um, I let it cool off. So, and my mom is here helping me get ready for baby, and so her dogs are here too. And so it's a little bit of a dog madhouse because um, if you guys are following me, I have three dogs. So, and then she's got two dogs. So it's a little bit crazy here. Oh, so for this, to warm this up, um, I defrosted it in the microwave from frozen when it was time to eat and then just finished it off on the stove. You could just defrost it in the microwave and warm it up. You could throw it in a crock pot on low a couple hours ahead of time. Really just kind of whatever works for you and your family. Um, everything's cooked. It's already simmered. It won't hurt it to simmer a little longer if you want to put it in the crock pot on low for a couple hours. So yeah, um, that's it. I'm gonna, the bag gets kind of dirty, so I'm gonna take just a paper towel and wipe around the zipper of each bag and then um, put it flat like the teriyaki chickens and then freeze them. So I definitely think that that's plenty of chili for me and my husband for one meal. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, I have an old video that was a little bit more in detail on each meal and exactly how to do each meal and tips for each meal and really thorough and this video is more just kind of coming into the kitchen with me and it not being um, perfect and just kind of showing you um, do uh, you know, the order that we did stuff and kind of how to break it up into a couple different days um, so because I'm very pregnant and um, the idea of doing it for that long is not very realistic so we split it up in two days so but if you want like more details on a certain recipe um, definitely go check out that video because you'll probably find it there um, or just comment in the comments and I'll try to kind of keep up with it and um, respond to you guys there. So yeah, I hope you guys have a blessed day. Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs this video up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.